Hello and welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, KK Konishiro. The use of technology in the classroom is a growing priority in schools as more and more industries look for workers with skills in the STEM components of science, technology, engineering, and math. Over the years, Fremont Unified has worked to provide more STEM opportunities for students at all grade levels. One teacher at Irvington High is leading this effort and creating a fully equipped makerspace in her own classroom where students can learn and apply STEM skills using state-of-the-art technology. And here with us tonight is the famous Irvington High School, Kristen Barbari. Thank you so much, and I want you to introduce your students. Uh, this is Sai Kesari. Um, he is in my Principles of Engineering class. Okay. Um, he took my Intro to Engineering Design class last year. Wow. And he is my Robotics Club president as well. Congratulations. And, uh, <laughs> uh, this is Isaac Linkovich. Um, he is a sophomore this year, and he was in my Intro to Computer Science class last year. He's not in my class this year, but he's in advisory with me. All three of these guys are actually in advisory with me. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, that's... We'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about <laughs> it. Um, and then this is Alana Valino, and Hello. she is also a sophomore, also was in my Intro to Computer Science class last year, and is in my advisory this year. This is great. Thank you so much for being here. And it's so nice to hear about this program. I'm so excited about to, uh, to learn about this. How did you come up with this idea, first of all? Oh man, that's a long story. Um, <laughs> I was hired at Irvington uh -huh. um, six years ago to run the robotics club and I was a math teacher and I also taught this intro to computer science class. It was called intro to technology at the time. Okay. And I wanted to teach robotics as a class instead of only having it as a club after school. So I approached um, one of our assistant principals at the time and asked him if that would be a possibility. And he said, absolutely, write a curriculum or get one and we'll get it approved by the district and then you can teach it as a class. So I did. Um, I got a curriculum and I modified it and presented it to the, to the district office. They approved it. So then I got to teach robotics as a class. Um, nice. The second year I was teaching robotics as a class, my principal approached me about teaching another program with, um, in conjunction with the ROP Center called Principles of Engineering and Intro to Engineering Design, both a part of this Project Lead the Way uh -huh. pathway. And so I said, yeah, that sounds terrific. So I got trained. Um, that was some uh, summertime work. And now I teach both of those classes as well. I don't teach any math anymore. <laughs> um, I mean, I do teach math. You do, yeah. I teach math in all my classes. Engineering is all math. <laughs> but yeah, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's folded in. Okay. And the kids learn math kind of by accident. That's, okay, well that's Which good, is way though. more fun. Yeah. <laughs> now, I gotta <clears throat> brag about you because when I saw this magazine and that you're <laughs> on page 36, this is phenomenal. We're on page 37 as well. I know, 36 <laughs> and 37. This is a great article, so if anyone sees this magazine, please get a copy of it and read about Mrs. B. She's famous now. Okay, so if I, because I've never been to your classroom and a lot of our viewing audience has never been to your class. You, you're welcome to come. I will. <laughs> um, could you describe what your classroom, the maker part, looks like? Is it the whole classroom or just a section of your classroom? No, it's the whole classroom. It's, wow. it's embedded in the whole thing because because I don't have enough space to make it a whole separate thing. <laughs> that would, that's, that's, that's goal number, that's next goal. A warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> um, it doesn't need to be that big, but bigger would be nice. Um, no, I wanted, I got super inspired when I went to um, Stanford University and went to their D school. I just felt like that space was like, it just made you want to make things and do things and like invent things and I wanted to create a space where my students could make anything they wanted, uh -huh. literally anything they wanted. And so I would have all the materials and I'd have all the equipment that they needed. And I'm working on it. I, <laughs> like we can make a lot of things. Yeah. If we don't have it, you buy it. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't have it, I buy it. That's true. So like what kind of equipment do you have right now? I have 15 3D printers. 15 or 50? 15. 15. One wow. Five. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, they run a lot. Um, I have a laser cutter. I have two CNC routers. I have... And how old do I have to be in your, cl to get in your class? This sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah, come and play with okay. us. I have a vinyl plotter wow. um, that makes you know, yes. vinyl stickers. Um, and then we have like an electronics bench with an oscilloscope and wow. soldering irons and mm -hmm. stuff like that. We have some woodworking equipment like 
saws and drills and I mean I guess you can use Dremel. drills for metal as well Dremels yeah yeah um, you gotta love a Dremel yeah right <laughs> um, it's really it's really fun and okay. if the kids need new equipment like if they want to do a specific project I work really hard to get the equipment to get that project um, I've been really fortunate to have ROP support I got my okay. CTE credential oh good so Congratulations. thank you um, and then I don't know like I have a, had a student last year who made a um, virtual reality game like he wrote his own game Wow and so we have an oculus rift like the virtual reality equipment to to use that mm -hmm. you know to, to play that game yeah um, anyway that's great yeah it's fun okay so how did you three find her was it you just walked into campus and you heard about this class or did you did someone recruit you how did this all take place because I'm curious, I mean, you've got a plethora of classes that you have to fit into your normal routine to get your GPA for, and all that. For me, it wasn't through a class, it was through Robotics Club. So um, I found, about, found out about Robotics Club on May's Day, okay. um, before school started. Mm -hmm. And I thought, hey, it's robotics, this is kind of what I wanted to do earlier. I never really knew that it would become such a huge part of my life, though. <laughs> <laughs> So I learned how to code in C in eighth grade before wow. I joined high school. Wow. And I, I really wanted to explore the other half of making things because there's programming mm -hmm. and there's mechanical stuff mm -hmm. in, that goes into making things that move, right? electronic things that move. So I wanted to explore stuff and learn how to fabricate and engineer things. Nice. So I joined robotics. Was it what you thought it would be? It was way more than what I thought it would be. <laughs> it usually is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, never, I never saw a 3D printer before I joined, um, before I walked into Ms. Burbawi's Makerspace. Okay. So that was a huge eye-opener. I didn't know that I could think of something and have it in my hands, <laughs> like almost in the same day. Yeah, it's fun. That was huh? insane. How about you? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm right along there with Sai. I had never seen like any of the equipment that Ms. Burbawi has. and. I had come into high school wanting to further my uh, knowledge of like coding or programming or things like that um, and maybe join the robotics team or things like that and as I was signing up for classes I saw that there was a uh, computer uh, science class okay. and it was Mercer Bowie's class and I went into that class wanting to learn more coding and stuff and I saw the makerspace and I like fell in love that <laughs> second <laughs> and I knew I wanted to further myself in coding but then also be able to like make different things right and things make like sure that. that the coding works with what you fabricated yeah yeah, yeah. that's the hard part yeah because what's definitely. in here doesn't actually <laughs> yeah. so Alana how did you find her well uh, I we our school has this thing called families and my family is ITA which uh, her class was one of the choices and I picked it and the first day actually I was late because I got lost because it was a whole thing and <laughs> I walked into PE Flash and the me. teacher was like <laughs> <laughs> they're so cute on the first day yeah. the teacher was like you're in the wrong class because it was like a block schedule thing uh -huh. and I walked in and as soon as I walked in I met Ms. Burbawi and she greeted me with like the warmest smile and as soon as I came in I knew this is like where I wanted to be this is great I mean talk about testimonials here mm. but I think the bigger testimonial is that you're now advisors so tell me what that's about master builders yeah it's definitely fun like not only teaching like the younger kids or even kids our age how to use the equipment but um, we also like learn different things as we're teaching them we learn like oh you can do this as well or there's an another way to do it um, that's faster or will make your things look nicer and be able to run more efficient so it's not only just about teaching the right. other kids but learning yourself so being advisor is more than just um, getting to use the makerspace it's about being a part of the makerspace so we I kind of feel said, like you own the part of it, right? Yeah, it's exactly. Yours. Yeah. So when there's something wrong, we're the ones to fix it. We're the ones to I like take that. care of it. Yeah. Yeah. It saves me a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to fix That's 15 great. 3D printers. Because <laughs> we have so much equipment. Yeah. 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 Do you feel the same? Yeah. Um, the first 
a year I was here, she like bought me a personal 3D printer and I was able to make it my own and like work on it. That's great. Yeah. Now tell me about the big event, the, the Maker Fair. How did you get the kids involved? How did you get Fremont known in the Maker Fair? This that is started, amazing. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, it's really, really fun. Um, so it started when I was a part of Robotics Club, running Robotics Club, and we would go with uh, the first robotics team, and first robotics has their own section at Maker Fair. But then, I don't know, I saw the things that you know my kids were doing, and I was just like, well, we should go to Maker Fair just with us. Uh -huh. So one year we went with, with that group, and I had a group of our own, um, and we had just one little table, and I, I brought... <laughs> 3D printer, and I think we brought the laser cutter that year, and one little table. And then, <laughs> that was four years ago. <laughs> um, the next year we had two tables, <laughs> and then now this you're last year, uh, I think it was 12. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this last year, yeah, and we had like 30 by 50 feet wow. of space. It was a huge space that we had. Yeah, and we, have, we bring up. Maker Fair. Was it really? Yeah. yeah. We, yeah. we have That's a amazing. full robotics field that we bring yeah. and like showcase the robots. We let other people drive them, showcase all the student projects. Um, going to Maker Fair is a big deal. It My kids have gotten thing. like recognition from that, right? I mean, we got to be in the magazine, yes. which was super cool. Yes. But they've gotten internships because of that. They've gotten priority enrollment to college because of that. They've met oh, wow. like contacts and stuff. Yeah. And it's super, super cool. Um, and they, that for is. some of them, they don't even realize until we get there what I've, why? You know what I mean? So why do I have to keep an engineering notebook? Why do I have to do it on the internet? Why do I have to like make this poster? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you know what? I've also noticed that <clears throat> when you're doing the Maker Fair, you're also teaching them how to present. For sure. Yep. And talk to people, because mm -hmm. people are not scary. Right. <laughs> yes. People want to learn. People are curious about what you do, and you're able you're able to articulate what you want to tell them. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not as scary so, anymore, right? No. You can no. do trade shows. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> this they, is great. They impress me every year, my students, when, when we're there. So do you have a line of students that want to get in your class? A um, waiting list? Yes, yes and no. I mean, it's there are so many, okay. uh, you know, um, classes at Irvington that are available for kids to take. Okay. So even though, like, I've got a lot of kids who would love to be in my classes, but, and there's that little but, right? Like, right. I am in the school play, and I need to be oh. in these drama classes, and I only have so many elective slots that I'm allowed to fill, or... I <clears throat> unfortunately want to take like 15 APs, <laughs> you know, just crazy things like that. So the intro to CS class this year is overflowing, though. It is. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. It's, yeah. There's wow. like, yeah. We don't have enough computers. We went from to... one class last year to having two this year. Yeah. Wow, amazing. But I think what a lot of people think about this whole maker fair type of classroom is that I'm only going to learn how to do robotics, but I really like making jewelry, or I really like making clothes. To me, that's part of the Maker's Fair that I don't think they understand that, like your earrings, oh, yeah. I 3D made these. printer, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, they're super fun. Super fun. We make lots of kinds of earrings. Yeah, and it, and <laughs> in Hollywood, when they're doing all the, you know, the aliens and monsters. Right. Those costumes need to have some kind of robotic in it, not only right. just the fabrication of it or sewing up or the clay making of things. Right. So I think what people need to understand, Maker Faire is every Everything. aspect of every industry. Right? right? Yeah. yeah. Right? Yep. You guys promoting even, that? Even agricultural. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Yeah, there's a whole building at Maker Faire dedicated to like hydroponics and, and gardening and stuff like that. And cooking. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of the kids in my room do make like cosplay type things, like yes, you know, outfits and like fake weapons replica right. things, like you know this like magical sword that you mm -hmm. know isn't sharp, but or the the you know. the scallops of the alligator skin, you know, with the lights right? in it. Yeah. yeah. One guy made a jacket. Um, with LEDs in his sleeve, or no, I'm sorry, wires in his sleeves and buttons right here. Yeah. And he had LEDs on the back Fabulous. that were arrows. Yeah. So he could ride his bike and have blinkers. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. I think it's great. DJ's helmets. Mm -hmm. uh, Brandon Quimson, one of our students, made uh, replicas of popular DJ artists that were mm -hmm. 3D printed parts that were lined wow. with LEDs, and he coded them himself. And they were fully really? wearable. 
and yeah, they would have lights and he got all kinds of, of things going. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. So, what do you want to be when you grow up now? A uh, mechanical engineer. And you? A uh, mechanical engineer yeah. as well. <laughs> and you like? I want to be a robotics engineer. Okay. So both mechanical and software. Good. Yeah. And then when you become big and famous, you can come back to Mrs. B's class and talk to her students, right? <laughs> you better, yeah. Because yeah. 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 she knew you when. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is great. Well, I'm so happy you guys were here. I so want to play in your classroom. Come visit. <laughs> Totally. This is great. Now, when is the next Makers Fair? Uh, next, next May. Year? Next May. Yeah. Um, so, if anyone's watching, do you know when in May the thing goes? I can blue? look it up. Memorial um, Day weekend. Normally. Is it Memorial Day yeah, weekend? Yeah, it's like the 16th, 17th, 18th, okay. something good. right around in there. And you guys will be there. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I'll be sure. there all three okay, days. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on this show. We do appreciate it. This thank has you. been a lot of fun. And I'm so jealous, but because <laughs> in my day we didn't have this. Mine either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but every from everyone here at Community Conversations, we appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.